Spider-Man Far From Home is a derivative movie for, of the Spider-Man Homecoming. Now, Spider-Man Far From Home, however, is not just another Spider-Man or the second uh, Spider-Man movie of this third Spider-Man series. <laughs> this is the third second Spider-Man. Um, but it's actually the epilogue, so to speak, of the Avengers Endgame. And of course there will be spoilers here when I talk about it. So when I was uh, watching it, I knew that um, you know this is now coming after Avengers Endgame. So what do they have in store for us? Of course it is actually taking place after the Avengers uh, Endgame. A couple of months later, I think. And it's uh, more of a teenage movie. Well, you can say the same thing for the Endgame too, but Endgame has a certain maturation of the story, and it was a sad movie. Uh, they tried to make it make this um, Spider-Man movie kind of sad as well, in that it starts with the loss of um, uh, Tony Stark, and I think Captain America too. You know, at the end of the Avengers Endgame, Captain America was now old, lived throughout those uh, years, and then uh, basically came, I think, to the present, and apparently he's dead. I mean, there was a scene that showed candles and those people who they lost, and Captain America was one of them, I guess. Um, so every movie, every um, superhero movie is defined by its supervillain. The super villain here, again spoilers, uh, is Mysterio. So Mysterio is a guy who uses illusions and such. And I was kind of familiar with it from some uh, old computer game that I uh, played it, but I didn't really know if some of his powers were real or not. Apparently, he's just a guy. He's not a, uh, a person who has any power whatsoever, and he uses um, cameras. To create illusion, so it is the same tech apparently that Tony Stark used uh, for that um, uh, virtual reality setting in uh, Winter Soldier, Captain America Winter Soldier. You know, there he was enacting a, a kind of a scene from his youth and such, I guess. And <clears throat> um, and uh, you know, it's it's weak. So. Um, it, it starts as if Mysterio is a helpful guy, but he's actually fighting these imaginary uh, elementals, which are not even there. And he's tricking everyone, including um, seemingly um, Nick Fury. Though it turns out Nick Fury is not even Nick Fury, so it turns out that those are the shapeshifters at the end. It is revealed. So, well, my biggest problem with the movie, I mean, it's fine fun, you can watch it um, as a Spider-Man movie, uh, but it is uh, pretty much the weakest movie <laughs> of almost everything. Uh, one, first because it's coming from the af after the Avengers, and second, um, the screenplay is weak. Like, the the Peter Parker character, it like contradicts with itself so much. In the Endgame or the Infinity War, they fought against, you know, invasion in the Endgame, he came back and uh, joined that big fight and now you expect some maturation level of uh, Peter Par Parker, but all he cares about is uh, Mary Jane. All he cares about is sex, in other words, which they don't really show it like that. They're, trying to make it romantic, but this is about all he cares. Now, it's not surprising that a teenager cares about sex, but, uh, you know, what happened all those losses? What happened all those uh, experiences he accumulated? Hasn't he not matured even a bit? Apparently he's 16 years old, um, and uh, he actually looks older, uh, even though without any beard or with, uh, you know, a young uh, face, uh, he doesn't actually look 16. And, uh, yeah, so there is this, are we gonna save the world? No, I actually wanna uh, kiss this uh, female. That 
that could have been the and was kind of of the first movie, right? So uh, he was just discovering his powers, and um, yes, he was uh, in love uh, with some females and such. I kind of forgot about the first movie. I have to be honest. I remember the villain. I remember Michael Keaton. I don't remember much about what happened uh, with the Spider Man, and uh, in this case. I again remember uh, Jack Gyllenhaal more than um, this um, Peter Parker guy whose name I don't even know. Tom Holland was I, I can't I can't remember. Uh, and um, and apparently Tony Stark leaves everything to him, which doesn't make sense either. So they explain that okay they couldn't have left his you know technology to Nick Fury that would he, he wouldn't share it with others. He wouldn't directly uh, give it to the government or anything like that. Yes, okay, but what about the war machine guy, the uh, the guy who got you know crippled? But uh, he was he was fine. He was uh, alive at the end of the movie, so he, he was uh, with him uh, for uh, for some period of time now, right? So why don't you leave it uh, with the war machine? Doesn't make sense. Um, any other uh, alternatives? Um, probably not Winter Soldier, but the other guy with the wings that uh, is flying, I forgot again, he can even become the next Captain America. Um, Wakanda people, so okay, they are may still maybe more isolated than the rest, even though they are not as, as isolated as they were before. They have their own technology, so maybe I, I can see that uh, they will be too much assuming in tech with uh, Storm Stark tech and their Wakanda tech. But to leave it to this 16 year old uh, boy and uh, with, this, with sunglasses, which basically connects it to something called Edith, something uh, like a computer, a uh, sensor computer, and gives him, you know, instant um, drone based assassination, uh, you know, capabilities and such. It, it's not realistic, even the slightest bit. In a science fiction, of course, there's this fiction part of all the superpowers is, that is not scientific, but they still have to be logical. They still have to, you know, show uh, part of um, uh, regular human behavior, what a human would do and such. And all those elements were missing here. And... Um, that was the biggest um, problem with it, aside being uh, from having the vehicle. The villain is just trying; he's a kind of apparently maniac type, trying to prove and then save the world. Compared to like Thanos and such, and now we are reduced to some random maniac guy uh, who they kill at the end. And then at the end, uh, apparently the video is released as this guy is trying to uh, show um, that uh, it was Spider-Man who was a bad guy. And why would people believe that? Why would they just announce this now terrorist guy's latest video, which probably was uploaded by his uh, teammate, uh, and uh, just, just show it like this to a uh, population and everybody... Uh, is now going to be confused or now believe that Spider-Man's bad the guy, you know, contributed to uh, saving the mankind. That doesn't make sense. I mean, there are so interesting elements, just like now that the Spider-Man's identity is revealed to everyone. Uh, initially, the only the kid will know. Apparently, the Aunt May knew about it. I can't remember if this was revealed in the first movie. But now, uh, Mary Jane... Um, discover that and what's with the behavior of those uh, teachers I mean you don't have to show a high school teacher as the stupidest person on the planet right? Uh, like they're showing oh this is witchcraft uh, uh, there are so much witches around Europe and such and believe me even after the very first incident that trip would have been cancelled nobody would uh, continue people uh, your parents would be worried about Oh, you know, our kids uh, were in danger of getting eaten uh, by some elemental, but whatever, let them continue or what. Yeah. Um, and well, there was one inconsistency in that Spider-Man uh, with the CGI 
was now a very acrobatic and very uh, agile um, person in the previous movies. At the beginning of this movie, Spider-Man uh, just, you know, can... Uh, uh, just like a, a little bit of a sporty person. Whereas towards the end of the uh, movie, you know, in those fight scenes, Spider-Man is again shown as the very agile. So there was inconsistency actually in Spider-Man's uh, physical capabilities throughout the movie, I would say. Um, yeah, and apparently at the end of the post credit scene, uh, you would say, there is going to be something else. Now, Nick Fury apparently is actually in space. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, with those green shapeshifter guys. I think this is the setup for another Captain Marvel movie. This uh, fourth phase that they're thinking, uh, I keep hearing about, uh, I think it's gonna suck. The reason being, uh, we have seen the peak, we know it, everybody knows it, we have seen the peak of the franchise, we have defeated, um, or the Avengers have defeated uh, the biggest villain out there, and so much build up was there up to this point, and beyond that, uh, it can be just closure basically for those characters, but uh, in announcing many other movies, I guess that's what they did. Um, for the next several years, come on, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, be excited for this. We, uh, we have seen uh, twenty something movies now, right? And this uh, Spider-Man movie, you know, if those twenty something movies didn't happen, if it were just Spider-Man: Homecoming and their Far From Home, things would have been fine. But after all our uh, journey with uh, all these people, uh, it was it was kind of a, a weak movie. No, if you just you know watch a Spider-Man movie, sure, it's not. I'm thinking of the previous movies. It's definitely not worse than the second second Spider-Man movie, and the first second Spider-Man movie. Uh, I can't even remember what the villain was. Uh, was it the octopus? I think so. Yeah, the Doctor Ock. Doc Ock. Um, yeah, I think Alfred Molina was good actually. So this is not the worst second Spider-Man movie. So it, it is watchable. I would say. 